Yeah. So he called, he called Markham, Markham, and he called Mark Seidenberg, and they said, don't worry, you just do what you do. See, those two are smart men, Markham and, 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 the, and the other guy. They can see the ability or analysis. And they they're... wouldn't have picked him over his own choice. They would have left him and keep, kept Hoffman's choice. Well, we need to wait until you get that chairman's being official and you call him in there. And let me see what happens. We can get Onalis and several venues without Tom, as he supports Tom. Yeah, I stand behind Tom. I think he's the, the perfect candidate, but Tom doesn't need to be there. Does it, that make sense, Ryan? I, I truly Absolutely. Believe, I truly believe that we're in a crucial time and the Lord is just simply moving. Yeah. And he's going to position where he needs to, where he needs to, and man's going to have to get out of the way. It's just that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Wiley Drake Show. We're going to come to you early today. We have a great show ahead for you. Uh, we're going to have a gentleman on with us, and I'm hoping he's going to be able to be here with us. Um, it's Advent Filmmakers, a gentleman by the name of Michael Snyder. And uh, we've been meeting today with Dr. Clyde Rivers, the ambassador from Burundi. God bless you, my brother. We'll see you this afternoon. Change the world. Change the world. Amen. Amen. And that's what we're going to do. Well, we do thank you for being here with us today. And uh, uh, if uh, the... Uh, hmm. I'm just trying to think of the, uh, uh, we should probably put that computer over there so you can get to it. Well, no, well, yeah. Meaning that one. That one, yeah. I need that one. Okay. And you want to go over there and do it or do it? Why don't you go over there and do it because I, here, no, oh, no, because, because we're going to have the guests there. That's the guest. You're in the guest chair and you know you, you don't like to be on TV. <laughs> happy about that. Tori doesn't like to be on TV. Okay, just work around uh, that stuff as cautious as you can, and uh, and, and and just turn that thing around. And be careful. And uh, now, if you will, um, I'm just trying to tell you where to go. If 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 you go to that NOM National Organization of Marriage, uh, you can you might be able to find. I don't know if you're going to be able to find him. I looked on there to try to find him. Who am I trying to find? Brian Brown, he's the head of that. Is my email still up there? You can see an email from them that they put out today. And just tell him that Pastor Drake would like to talk to him about the email that he sent that he sent me today. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Christian films, ladies and gentlemen, and. Uh, one of the things that we have been uh, discussing and talking about very intensely here on the Hill, as well as back in California, and that is uh, the Hollywood Prayer Tour. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be doing some uh, research. Corey's going to help me with this, and I'm going to do some research through <coughs> Ted Bear and MovieGuide.USA and Karen Covell and uh, those folks in Hollywood because I have heard sort of second-handedly but some of it first-handedly uh, but I don't have the data and you know me I don't like to put anything out unless I've got some data in my hand that's why I have an intelligence briefing officer I don't put out any intelligence report without going through him and uh, the reason I wanted uh, Dr. Clyde Rivers <clears throat> excuse me, the ambassador from uh, uh, Burundi. The reason I wanted him wasn't just to be able to say, yeah, yeah, look at us, we've got an ambassador. No, the reason I wanted Clyde Rivers on board is because he is an ambassador in the fullest sense of the word uh, and in the greatest sense of the word. And I want him to help me be a good ambassador. I am an ambassador not an honorary or anything else, but I am an ambassador for the kingdom of Almighty God according to the Word of God. I also am an Israeli. Uh, I was born into the Israeli uh, group. I was born in the United States of America, and uh, I was raised here, been here most of my life, have traveled out of the country, have had passports. Uh, into uh, all of the Mideast uh, countries. I had, uh, if I showed you my old passports, you would see stamps from Abu Dhabi and Dubai and Bahrain and, and uh, South Africa and Egypt and Israel and all that. And this was all before the Israeli-Egyptian accord. 
i say all of that to say that folks i do have quite a bit of experience in traveling over that part of the world what do you want from this he's from the national organization uh, for marriage yeah and so what do you want i want you to call him and tell him that i received an email from him today and that i would like to have him come on my television show at noon and discuss that email if he can if he can't set him up for another day but if we can get him on today we're hoping to have michael snyder with us here in a little bit uh, one of the reasons i came on early was just to make sure everything is working and looks like so far that it is and everything is a go and uh, we had dr rivers here and we had our prayer meeting this morning uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a lot of things today, but uh, I would encourage you to indeed uh, be uh, on target with us. Let me remind you that if you'd like to call us, if you'd like to be on this show today, you'll have to wait till the top of the hour for this, but if you'd like to be on the show, Corey, there's a... If, if, uh, if you'd like to be on the show today, folks, you can be on the show. In order to come on the show, all you have to do is pick up your telephone. I'm going to be off camera just for a moment. But if, um, if you would... Uh, like to be on the show today. I'm going to get some paperwork out here so I've got all this with me when my other gentleman arrives. If you would like to be on the show with us, you can come on right now. We're live from the Supreme Court cafeteria uh, in Washington, D.C. We're uh, going to be having a, a gentleman here with us in a few moments, Mr. Michael Snyder, and we would encourage you to uh, listen in when he gets here because he's going to talk to us about the merger of a couple of organizations that have uh, decided to come together to work on uh, improving our efforts and outreach in a very very important world and that is the world of media and social media and social communications everything from facebook to twitter to all those kind of things and we're going to be talking to him about that there's a couple of companies that are merging together here in virginia they're clear close by here to dc and the reason we're going to hopefully have him on the show is he is local and we're local here today we're doing our broadcast live <clears throat> we are here all week if you're watching the wiley drake show for the first time uh, let me tell you a little bit about this show <clears throat> First and foremost, I am a Baptist preacher. I'm very unapologetically, denominationally tied with the Southern Baptist Convention. I was the second vice president in 207, 208. So that put me at the top of the ladder at the Southern Baptist Convention. Some 15 million of us are called Southern Baptists. We have somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 to 50,000 Southern Baptist churches in America and around the world. I would encourage you to um, contact your local Southern Baptist church and find out what God's doing through them and get in touch with them. Now, with that in mind, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about this show. <clears throat> this show is called the Wiley Drake Show. <clears throat> and I'm clearing my throat because I've been doing a lot of talking. <laughs> Sir, what number would you like the gentleman to call in in about maybe five minutes? Or At so? five five nine five nine two five nine six one. Wait, just five five nine five nine two five nine six one. Let me repeat that to you. Yeah, there it is. Five nine nine five nine two five nine six one. And give him the uh, two o two number in case that doesn't work. Area code, we have another number, which is 202-747-4839. Right. And both of those are cell phone numbers. And give me your name once again. <coughs> Look forward to hearing from you. We appreciate you speak on any portion of this. 
but to update and infill all of our listeners. We do have a wide audience that's looking to your role there. So we look forward to you in just a little while. Excellent. Thank you for taking the time and trouble. You have a great day. Okay, that's the National Organization of Marriage. Thomas Peters is the rep of the Okay. <clears throat> is he local, do you know? Or where is that? Thumping on the other side of the wall. <laughs> You're going to get some sound effects, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Wiley Drake Show. <laughs> live from the Supreme Court cafeteria and uh, as I said we were talking about the show we're coming up to the top of the hour where we'll be officially on the air but uh, before we do and we are on the air both on Crusade Radio and on um, the um, <laughs> the television I'll, I'll get my head straight here in a minute uh, what I want to do is uh, um, Corey, when you get an opportunity, well, that gentleman's going to be calling in on that number, though, so you can't call him on that number. Um, why don't you real quickly call Mel on that number and see if we're coming through on Crusade Radio. What's my number for Mel? You just wrote it down, that 559 number. Yeah, just call him on that number and tell him we are sending callers to that number, but ask him if we're coming through now loud and clear, if he can hear me okay and so forth. <clears throat> Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, the flagship, really, of the Wiley Drake Show is called CrusadeRadio.com, and then we broadcast here to you live on Ustream.tv. Now, uh, like I said before, this show uh, has my name on it, and I take great pride in that, uh, but I also take great pride in the fact that, that somebody's got to be in charge, so to speak. So. Uh, my first job is to be the pastor of a Southern Baptist church, and that's what I do the most and what I believe the best, but is God... Is or 559-592-5961? 559-592-5961. Did you give our guy the right number? <laughs> hmm? All right. Uh, my first job is to be the pastor of the First Southern Baptist Church. Back about 25 years ago, the Lord calls me to seek to expand our ministry through what many folks refer to as the prayer of Jabez. Are you okay, caller. We got a caller on the line. Hang on just one second. Let me get you up. Thank you. Have a great Okay, caller, are you there? Hello, caller. Well, I thought I had a caller on the line from Crusade Radio, but I guess maybe I lost him. Did you talk? Yeah, getting a, okay, did we get a... Did you talk to Mel? Mm -hmm. And then we're coming through? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right. Uh, well, don't call him back because call you call that other guy we talked about because if you gave him, did you give that our caller the right number? But he has two numbers to call. Okay, but I would call him back and give him the right number. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the Wiley Drake Show today. We are up and officially on time. We are live and broadcasting on Crusade Radio. Crusade Radio is our flagship. We've been operating with Crusade Radio now for 12 years, and we praise God for that opportunity. Brother Mel Pied is at the helm, and uh, we are broadcasting to you live today on Ustream.tv, the Wiley Drake Show, live from the Supreme Court of the United States. Our studio today is at SCOTUS, S-C-O-T-U-S, that's Supreme Court of the United States, and uh, we are indeed uh, broadcasting on that. Um, and, uh, hey there, I just spoke with you, and I'd like to get a hold of Mr. Peters. We are hopefully having uh, a Mr. Uh, Peters uh, come on the line, or some other folks come on the line with us, but uh, we're working on that right now, and uh, if you'd like to call us, let me give you a couple of numbers that you can reach us on. 
The first one would be a 714 number. If you'd like to call me on that number, you can reach me there. 714-865-8147. 714-865-8147. That number will reach me here, right here on the desk. And uh, also there's another number if you'd like to call the Washington, D.C. number. The Washington, D.C. number is 202-747-4938. Is that right? 4938? Mm-hmm. All right. And those are the two numbers you can reach us here in Washington, D.C. Uh, you can also call us on the Crusade Radio number, but I'm not going to give that one out right now because we're expecting a caller uh, to call in on that number, and we'll take that number. We had a caller from Crusade Radio, but it sounded like a female. And I don't know how we lost her or, or what happened, but uh, evidently uh, we lost her. We are still live with Crusade Radio on my phone. And uh, if Mel puts the number through to me, we should be able to get it. Can you look there, Corey, and figure out how to get the instant messenger? Is it down on the, on the bar down there? Because Mel will be sending instant messages to that computer. If you see it. Okay, well, anyway, that's okay. Never mind. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me give you some websites that I would encourage you to go to. One is called the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. That's an organization that's been around for a long time. We're not the new... Caller? All right, we got a caller on the line. Caller, go ahead. Well, I'm Thomas Peters with the National Organization for Marriage, and I hear you guys are strong defenders of Chick-fil-A. Well, we try to be, <laughs> and we try to serve the Lord, and we try to be uh, supportive of uh, what we call a Judeo-Christian uh, marriage. And uh, you folks are obviously on the same page. Uh, I received uh, uh, some information from you guys in reference to what you're doing. In fact, let me just tell you a little bit. I, I don't say this just to brag. But it is fact. Um, on August the 1st, I suggested to people that we, that is churches and pastors and radio and television shows and everybody, that we do an August 1st Chick-fil-A day. And we went out and bought 125 sandwiches and brought them to our homeless shelter. And we started the Chick-fil-A day on uh, August the 1st. Uh, Mr. Huckabee and uh, Mr. Santorium came on board a little later on that, and a lot of people ran with it, and that's fine. I'm not trying to say, I, you know, it doesn't belong to me, but I do believe it's a good idea. And I'm in Washington, D.C. right now doing a live broadcast. We were also, will be this afternoon at the Family Research Council where the man went in and shot uh, one of the staff at Family Research Council. Our friends, we are a prayer group, and we go there once a month we will be going there again tomorrow and we thank you for the opportunity to talk to you about your organization so without further ado let me let you do the talking and let me ask you to do a couple of things number one give us your name again and your location your organization and tell us a little bit about what you do sure well um my name is Thomas Peters, and I'm a cultural director at the National Organization of Marriage. I actually live here in D.C. as well, so we're doing this whole remote thing, but I probably could just walk down the street and found you. Um, and uh, the National Organization for Marriage is dedicated to protecting marriage in all 50 states and in our federal laws. So uh, when we heard what Dan Cathy said about being probably pro-marriage, and we saw these mayors across America in these liberal towns like Boston and San Francisco say that, you know, Dan Cathy and Chick fil were unwelcome. The definition of marriage, we just jumped into action, and it sounds like you and Governor Huckabee, we might think alike, and we're all like, let's come together and show our support for Chick-fil-A, and that it's just incredible. On August 1st, and doing Wednesdays, you've had hundreds of people in their photos and their videos of, you know, what was happening at their local Chick-fil-A. And of course, we realized working in the marriage issue that we can't always rely on the media to tell our side of the story, but... 
thank God for things like social media and Facebook and Twitter. We can tell our own stories. And so what we're doing right now is encouraging people from now until the election to go to their Chick-fil-A on Wednesdays or more likely on that day to bump into someone else who's there for the same reason and the same values. What we found happening so far that people of like mind are coming together and realizing that there's more of us than there are of them. There's more enough people to save the great bunch of and save this. Well, we certainly appreciate what you're doing, and, and let me just simply say there's a couple of things that we would like to offer to you, and you're welcome to offer this to any of the folks that you communicate with, and that is simply this, and I'm going to offer it to my audience right now live around the world. If you folks, uh, if any of you out there hear what uh, this organization is saying and what I'm saying and what others are saying, and you say, yeah, I agree, we want to support Chick-fil-A, and we're going to support Chick-fil-A. And if you would like to come on my television program and say, hey, I'm a, I'm a citizen, I'm not a, a leader or anything, I'm just a citizen, and I'm supporting Chick-fil-A, you're welcome to come on my program and appear live. You can either come in the studio or you can call my producer and come in as this gentleman is right now by telephone. So if you'd like to do that, if you support Chick-fil-A in any way. Now, especially if you're an organization, you have an office group, you have a church, you have a, you know, a, a citizens group, and you say we are going to officially uh, promote uh, Chick-fil-A. And if you'd get that data to us, we'll run it on our television program and show your company. We'll give you free advertisement. If you have a company, I don't care what it is, any kind of company, and you say our company is going to support the company Chick-fil-A, you get that to us, and then we will advertise that ABC Widget Company is indeed supporting Chick-fil-A, and here's how you get in touch with them if you want to buy widgets. And so we'll give you free advertisement on the Wiley Drake Show, which goes around the world. We broadcast two one-hour shows every day, Monday through Friday, and we do special shows from special locations like right here at the Supreme Court in D.C. So you're welcome, my friend, to put that on your releases. Tell people if they want to talk about it, they can come on the Wiley Drake Show. And obviously that will give me more listeners, so yeah, I benefit. But the bottom line is Chick-fil-A will benefit because people are going to continue to purchase and to support um, our good friend Dan Cathy at uh, Chick-fil-A. And so tell our listening audience again what your encouragement is at this point. Well, sure. Um, I'm sorry, did you say uh, what our what, what encouragement is at this point? You yeah, what, what are you encouraging people to do right now? If they're watching this show and they're hearing from you, again, give them the name of your organization and then tell them what you're encouraging them to do uh, not only about marriage, but what you're encouraging them to do with Chick-fil-A. Sure. Um, well, I, I was a national organization for marriage, and we're uh, encouraging people to publicly support Chick-fil-A every Wednesday from now until Election Day. Um, and then also, if they want to go to a website, think Chick-fil-A.com, you can send a personal letter to the Cathy's telling them you're going to support them. And um, right now we've got over 20,000 people who've done that. So go to thankchickfilet.com or just Google Thank Chick Fil A and um, just stand up and be counted. And that's something the media can't ignore and witness. And it's also just a good thing. It's the right thing to do. Amen. And if you do it as an individual or as a company or organization and you would like to come on the Wiley Drake show that is on two one hour shows, one at. Uh, at 12 noon, which is the one we're on right now, and we'll do another show tonight at 8 o'clock, and we do that Monday through Friday. And if your company, you would like to come on and do a commercial for your company, long as your commercial, you can say anything you want to in your commercial about your product, about your company, or how to get in touch with you, so long as you preface it by saying, our company is supporting Chick-fil-A, we're encouraging our employees to support Chick-fil-A, and then do your advertisement. Advertise your company, advertise you know your business, whatever you'd like to do. We'll give you free advertisement so long as you stipulate that uh, you are supporting Chick-fil-A. Now, if you'd like to do that, you're an individual or a company, I want you to call my producer because she's the one that will organize your slot on the show. Her name is Corey, C-O-R-I, H-A-R-K-I-N-S, Corey Harkins, 
and you can reach her by email at coreyharkins at gmail.com, coreyharkins at gmail.com, or you can call her and say, hey, I want to be on, I want to do my own commercial. You can tape it, you can MP3 it, you can do whatever you want to, you can get it to us. Uh, or you can come in the studio if you want to come to California. Or right now you can come in my Supreme Court studio here in Washington or wherever I might be on location. Uh, or you can just call in and be on the phone. My dear brother, give us one more time before you leave your name, your organization, and the websites, please. Sure, I'm Thomas Peters. I'm with the National Organization for Marriage. And the website's a publicly thank Dan Cathy and stand with him. All right, my brother. God bless you. Keep up the good work. And if there's anything else we can do to help you, let me know. We're on, like I said, Monday through Friday, two one-hour shows. And if you'd like to come back on, you'd like to come back on. You've got Corey's number and email. Uh, by the way, Corey's phone number, if, if I didn't give that, Corey's phone number is 714-470-9225. So if you'd like to call her, call her. Her name is Corey Harkins, Corey Harkins at Gmail. Brother, thank you so much for coming on with us. Keep up the good work, and God bless you. And if there's anything we can do to help in any way, we are pro-biblical Judeo-Christian marriage, and anything we can do to help you folks, please let us know. God bless you, and have a great day. All right, I think he's gone. If you'd like to call, ladies and gentlemen, there's several numbers you can reach us on. That phone line is available now. That's at Crusade Radio, 559-592-5961. 559-592-5961. You can call us on that number. Brother Mel Pied at Crusade Radio will put you through. And we thank the Lord for Brother Mel. Thank you, Mel, for putting folks through. That came through loud and clear. I hope he came through loud and clear to you. And uh, we thank the Lord for that. Now. We want you to know that uh, there's another number if you'd like to call us right here in Washington, D.C., what we have designated as the District of Christ, no longer the District of Columbia, the false God, but we are the District of Christ, the God, the only God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, and we make no apologies for that. We are broadcasting to you from Washington District of Christ, and we thank the Lord. Now, if you'd like to call us here in the district, the phone number is 202-747-4839. If you'd like to call us in California on the Crusade Radio line, that number is indeed 559-592-5961. And if you'd like to call on my wife's hotline, Barbara Drake Memorial Hotline, uh, that will reach you in here quickly as well. You can call us on 714-865-8147. And so we thank the Lord for uh, you listening. Now, anything else you'd like to talk to us about, uh, we're hoping to get a gentleman in here shortly that we can talk to about what's going on in the media and, prim and primarily in uh, uh, with a with a film company uh, that is merging with another one, and they're going to be working on bringing together a more effective, better way to present the gospel. Now, <clears throat> the way to do that, of course, is through movies in Hollywood. We're going to be sharing with you later on that uh, information. And by the way, here I'm I'm going to put out a, an appeal to those of you out there who would like to um, be involved in a little research. I have a research expert extraordinary in, in my producer, that's Corey Harkins. She is a great expert in, in doing research. And, and we're going to uh, encourage her, I already have, and she's going to be doing research. But if you'd like to help her, if you'd like to help Corey, uh, if, you, if you'd like to help her, you'd like to uh, feed her some information, I'll give her numbers and email a little later uh, again, and I would encourage you to uh, help her. Now, let me tell you <coughs> what I want you to help her do. I have asked Corey, I've given Corey an assignment. It is my understanding. Now, folks, I'm an old fella. I'm 68 years old, and uh, but... Uh, 
I say that to say that I do have a little bit of experience, and uh, I am also, uh, I live in California, I live close to Hollywood, I have, uh, my kids and grandkids have all been involved in Hollywood, they've been movie stars. Now, you would not recognize their name. They've not made any big movies or anything like that, but they have made movies. One of my granddaughter's movie went to the Sundance Festival and uh, uh, so forth. And so uh, they have been in the movie industry, so I do know a little bit about the movie industry. And I have a real good friend, a personal friend, who is also a Christian, who loves the Lord, who has done a great deal to help try to clean up Hollywood and uh, uh, to clean up Hollywood a little bit, and his name is Ted Bear. And uh, come on in, my friend, and have a seat right over here. Thanks. Welcome to the SCOTUS studio of the Wiley Drake Show. Have Pleasure a seat and catch you. your breath. Could you, uh, ladies, do I have, do I have a moment? To yeah, yeah, sir. Sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Men's room's right down the hallway here on the right. All right, well, that's our guest coming in uh, out of breath, but we'll, we'll, get him, uh, we'll get him sent to the, the men's room and get him taken care of and then get him settled down here. And, uh, Corey, get your makeup kit out. And, uh, no, only kidding. Uh, anyway, we don't use makeup on the Wiley Drake show, as, uh, as is obvious. See these double chins I've got? If Corey would, she could hide those, but she don't want to. So, anyway, uh, we don't use makeup on the Wiley Drake show. I just throw that out. But, anyway, uh, the reason I'm talking about Hollywood and my involvement in Hollywood, over the years I have heard sort of second and third and fourth handed that there was a great deal. I'm a history buff and I love America and I love the history. When you look here on this hill, for example, there's a great deal of Bible on this hill all over the place. Not only the Ten Commandments at the Supreme Court, but when you look at the Capitol itself, it is the picture of the helmet of salvation the scripture talks about. And if you look at the Washington Monument, it's a sword sticking up in the sky that is symbolic of the Word of God. The Bible says the Word of God is quicker and sharper and powerful than a two-edged sword. And that tower resembles a two-edged sword. On and on I could go around this city. There are so many examples of history, Christian history, biblical history. And I'm of the opinion, and I'm also of the inclination to look for it, and I want to look, but I'm having Corey look for it even better than I can, and that is the history of Hollywood and where it started and so forth. And um, uh, we're talking about uh, the entertainment industry, and we know that Ted Bear is one of those leaders in the industry. And there's some other companies. In fact, there's some companies here. We just heard about this this morning uh, on our favorite news wire service, and that is Christian News Wire. Now, uh, it's my opinion that we need to do everything we can to reclaim Hollywood. Last Saturday, we had a Hollywood prayer tour. Uh, we worked with Ted Bear out there. We worked with uh, a lot of other folks to try to regain the Christian history of Hollywood and also, in a very practical way, not just historically, but in a very practical way, try to find out how we can put together uh, more media, more movies, and that kind of thing that will indeed achieve a great family, God-honoring uh, situation. And so I saw a press release this morning, and I'm a little bit at a disadvantage because I don't have my computer in front of me, but the gentleman that was on that press release that I saw on Christian Newswire uh, has what I think is a very interesting concept. So I want to move the camera over here and get him on camera with me and say good morning. Good morning. Wyatt. God bless you. you. And God tell bless her, you too. That's your camera. That's your microphone. Right. Tell our listening audience who you are. Uh, my name is Michael Snyder. And I am one of the co-founders of uh, Advent Film Group, which we started about five years ago with my business partner, George Escobar. And uh, we've just come to the point where uh, we have always had the goal of, of training young people, and I can tell you more about that. Um, but we have been doing this now through four feature films and one full-length documentary, uh, and we feel we need to go to the next level. And so we have created now a not-for-profit organization called Advent Filmmakers Center for Training and Discipleship. And our view of things is 
Uh, sometimes we as Christians spend a lot of time cursing the darkness and less time being the light. Brother, let me interrupt you there just for a minute. Boy, you've really hit a nerve with me because um, I happen to be the, I'm an old man, so I'm, I have a gr bunch of grown kids and grandkids, and all of my kids are involved in Hollywood. Mm. And uh, one of the things that came as a perplexing thing to me a number of years ago when my daughter was uh, just not even married yet, she wanted to be a movie star. She wanted to go to Hollywood. Well, I'm a Baptist preacher, and I had always heard, lived in California, but, you know, Hollywood is highly weird, and, and it's terrible, and, and I did not want my daughter to go into the movie business. Yes. But she saw fit to do as many kids do, say, Dad, I'm going to do my own thing. And so she did. And so I became very concerned about the industry, and I've been concerned ever since. As a result of that, all of my grandkids are in the movie business. They, nobody would know their names, but they've made Canon commercials and all kind of commercials and travel all over the country. Uh, but I say all of that to say that one of the things that we tried to do, when I say we, my daughter, my grandkids, my son-in-law, we tried to take, uh, not go in there and beat them over the head kind of thing, but go in and say, hey, there's another way, there's a better way. And when I saw your press release, I said, these guys are on the same page we're on. That's exactly what you're doing. And so go ahead and tell us what your goals are to train these disciples exactly. in Hollywood. Sure. Um, we, we really, I think the church needs to have two strategies. One, yes, we get as many people to work their way into Hollywood once they're prepared mm. to deal with the sport, spiritual warfare that's so amen. intense yeah. oh, in amen. that place, amen. in that industry. Um, and we know that God will, over time, redeem anything if we're honoring Him Absolutely. and His will and doing it His way. At the same time, uh, we can't just throw people into Hollywood and expect <laughs> that they're going to find jobs or that they're going to find jobs that are going to honor Christ. Mm. Uh, and so we need to have something else going on on the side. Whether God wants that to last for 25 years or 200 years, right. we don't know. But we, know, we believe it's necessary, and so in a sense, what we're trying to do for the, for the now mm -hmm. is to build Hollywood. Amen. And by that, I really mean the cross. Amen. And that Amen. everything we do has to come through the cross. Well, you know, in reference to that, we had a, we had a lady that was in a prayer group out on the West Coast, and, uh, and, and um, I don't know what your religious background is as far as, you know, your church and your beliefs and so forth, but... Whether it is in your belief strata or mine or somebody else's, this lady uh, was concerned, was praying about Hollywood, and she said she had a dream one night. And indeed, she said, I saw in my dream the Hollywood sign. And of course, everybody knows where that's at. Oh, yes. And she said, I saw the Hollywood sign, but she said, I almost woke up in my dream because there was an L missing. Ah, okay. And that's... that made it holy. Really. Yes. And she said, I believe that is a you know, a prophetic dream from Almighty God. And uh, whether that is true or not, I'm not going to get into a, a religious debate sure, with anybody. Sure. But I do know this. My name is Wiley Drake, and I'd love to see Hollywood, Hollywood. I live 22 miles from the Hollywood sign. Ah. I'm up the street from Knott's Berry Farm. I pastor a church near Knott's Berry Farm. Uh, and I also... we. The church is only about five miles from Disneyland. Hmm. And so we're in the entertainment world, sure and I want to see it become more holy. Yes. One of the things I've asked my assistant and uh, producer of my show to do, uh, I have heard over the years in Hollywood some word of mouth only, but word of mouth history. You know, you always hear about Holly Weird and what they're doing and all the bad sure. things. But as I began to associate with Ted Bear and other people that were Christian in Hollywood, I began to hear some historically significant events years ago, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but years ago that were indeed holy in, in Hollywood as well as in New yes. York. Now, with that in mind, I've asked uh, Corey and some other folks to join in and help to do some research and let us bring out the end. I'd like to be able to come on this show and say, look, folks, here's some good spiritual heritage. Not only what you're doing now in the here and now, but I want to be able to talk on our show what the here and now and where the roots of Hollywood are. And sure. so we're going to be doing that as well. Excellent. Tell us a little bit about uh, Advent and, uh, sure. and your companies and also 
please uh, give our listening audience uh, websites, telephone numbers, whatever sure. they can do to Happy get in to. touch. Okay, great. Well, when Advent Film Group began, um, this, uh, this just kind of relying on God, uh, we made a first movie called Come What May, a strong pro-life movie set mm. at Patrick Henry College. Uh, a guy and gal are moot court partners on an abortion issue. They're falling in love. We model modesty and mm. chastity in that relationship, but we also teach people about the law uh, and Roe v. Wade and everything else. So uh, it, it was a, a great film, a great story, but like anything else. Uh, we had a very, when you start, you start small. Amen. And you have to be faithful to what God gave you, and Amen. then He will give you more. And so we can't say the production values on that are super high production values because what we did is we had five professionals, and we had 40 young people, ages of roughly uh, 12 to 25, mm. who worked on that film. That was their first exposure to filmmaking, and that's how we want to get hands on for young people to begin to taste this and feel it and search before God whether this is. A career path for them. Amen. Uh, the next movie we shot is called Hero. It's a fathering movie. It's um, three father-son stories woven together in Little League Baseball. Mm. And we see um, these relationships are broken for different reasons. And, and ultimately we see the movement toward reconciliation mm. and redemption in all these relationships because we, we want to give fathers that, that extra motivation. Mm. We, we want them to uh, to take the measure of how they're doing, Amen. measure the gap between how they're doing and what they ought to be Amen. doing, Amen. and give them the hope and encouragement that they can close the gap. Amen. Amen. So that's that's hero, uh, and uh, and again we had uh, close to 40 young people interning on that project, learning as we go. Some who were with us previously, some who were new. Mm. Uh, and then even some come back uh, oh, to uh, work on post-production with us. Amen. We can't bring all, all people to work on post-production. <laughs> but uh, So we give them that exposure. And then uh, we, sh we uh, were heavily involved in um, a, a historical movie called Alone Yet Not Alone, which is a true story set in the time of the French and Indian War. Mm. So a family leaves Germany to come to America for faith, family, and freedom. Oh my this goodness. is real founders' values Amen. and faith at the Amen. center of it. And they land in Philadelphia, they buy land, they go to um, build their homestead, the Indians attack, kill mm. the father and one son, and take two daughters captive, ages 12 mm. and 9. Oh and uh, so the rest of the film is a question of uh, for, for the secular audience, the question is, uh, will they ever find their way home and how? Mm. For the believing audience, it will be, how will they find their way home as well to their Father in Heaven? Amen. Amen. And, uh, and that's set up early in the film, um, that, so people will walk away with an answer, but I don't want to give Yeah, yeah, away. sure, don't give it away. But, yeah. I mean, that was shot all over Virginia and Jamestown and Williamsport oh, and Yorktown yeah. and North Carolina and Tennessee. because Gorgeous a, historical Gorgeous. Area. Oh, and oh. that will be in theaters next day. April. All right. Well, we want to be a part yeah, of that. Yeah. We want to. We want. We want to help promote it. Uh, that's great. Uh, we want to do everything we can. Uh, and just to give you an idea, uh, you talk about small beginnings. Mm -hmm. Twelve years ago, I began broadcasting on a small radio station mm -hmm. on the internet called Crusade Radio. We're on that Crusade Radio broadcast right now, and I began with them. They're our flagship. And then recently, a couple of years ago, we. Ustream and YouTube, and we broadcast. Now I do two one-hour shows, and we do them live. Uh, I'm here in D.C. this week, not to protest or to lobby or anything, but I'm here to pray. I have the privilege to be the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference in D.C., so we're here to pray. Well, since I'm here, we prayed this morning, we did other things, and my show is on at 12 noon every day, mm. Eastern time. So I come here and use the cafeteria for my studio, and now we're broadcasting live all over the world. Fantastic. And we do that Monday through Friday, wherever I'm at, and I can go into people's offices. Uh, we can go into their, we've been on a shoot with people where they were shooting a film. Mm. And uh, one of the other things, very interesting story, I think, in reference to what we're talking about in reference to the industry. My daughter, Carla, uh, had her kids in the industry, and as the little girls grew up, the the uh, uh, 
agents began to try to book them in some films that she wasn't too mm. happy with yes. and began to try to get them, well, you got to dress this way and a little bit more lascivious and so mm -hmm. And my daughter said, no, we're Christians. We're not going to yeah. do that. Good and so she, so she was constantly beating heads together with her agent. Yes. The agent said, Hi, I can't get your book because you won't let the girls wear the things that show a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking them to do something nude, but they got to, you know, yada, yada, yada. Right. And my daughter said, Nope, not going to do that. If that's the way you got to do it, do it, we're not going to do it. So she hung in there. Well, at one time she came to me and was very discouraged because mm -hmm. she said, Dad, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold tight and I'm going to hold tight. But she said, I, I think it's, I think the girls aren't getting any callbacks anymore mm -hmm. and they're not getting any jobs anymore. And, and, and so I'm paying the price, and I don't like it. Yes. <laughs> and I said, well, just keep paying the price and hang in there. She was a little bit discouraged. And finally one day on the set, she came home, and she was not discouraged anymore. She was very encouraged. And she said, I met a lady today. You're not going to believe this. And I talked to her on the set. We were shooting a little commercial or something. And she said, I told her, you know, she's a little older than I am. And, and she said, uh, I told her that my teenage daughters, you know, the problem I was having it. And she said, well, I have a teenage son, and so we talked. And at that time, she said, well, he's not a teenager anymore. Uh, but anyway, she said, I had a son that was in the movies and was a teenager. And, and she said, I went through the same thing, even with a boy. Mm. She said, I went through the same thing, that they wanted my son to do things uh, that were not Christian. And so she said, I finally just said, that's it. I fired my agents. Mm -hmm. And I became his agent. Wow. And so she said, we've been successful. And my daughter said, so, Dad, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to become my daughter's agents. Hmm. And I said, well, who told you that? <laughs> and she said, a lady by the name of Miss Cameron. And I said, do you know what her son's name is? And she, he, she said, yeah, Kurt Cameron. <laughs> okay, that's tremendous. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's what's going on in Hollywood. I have two very good friends in Hollywood. Well, more than two, but I have Ted Bear, who's a great friend. And then there's two ladies in Hollywood that have Hollywood Prayer Network. Mm. They have an office in Hollywood on Gower Street, right across from First uh, Hollywood First Presbyterian Church, okay. where Lloyd Ogilvie, who used to be the chaplain of this yeah, of the this Senate, Senate, and uh, so forth, and uh, and they do a Hollywood Prayer Network, mm. and they do they try to be sort of under the radar, low key, sure. but they do prayer walks in Hollywood. We just did a prayer tour, our first prayer tour in Hollywood, on the fir on the third Saturday of every month. Mm. We're gonna get we get a van, we take a 15 passenger van, and anybody that wants to go. Prayer Tour Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Now you'll see all the tour vans for Tour of the Stars Homes and all of that, but you're going to see one that is from our church in Buena Park that says Hollywood Prayer Tour. Mm -hmm. So we're doing, we're putting feet on the ground, boots on the ground, so to speak. Fantastic. Now, Advent, tell us a little bit more about the sort of nuts and bolts, because I know if I don't ask you this, my daughter is sure. going sure, to be sure, on sure. my case. Yeah. But now, how do you help young, you're talking about being able to help young people like my grandkids sure. uh, to get into the industry and to maintain in the industry and do better in the industry. Yes. How's that happen? How's that work? All right. Well, uh, we began with just having people work on set with us, those movies I just described mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. bit ago. And then we have uh, moved, well, along the way, we hold annually two or three film workshops for mm. two-day film workshops. We've had people from all over the country come to attend these, even a brother and sister from Spain oh my goodness. came in. Who, who, and that was three years ago, and they've just been tremendous workers alongside us since then. I mean, hey, God just, just brought people together. And so that begins, um, oh, by the way, when we do a workshop, it's, it includes the business part of the filmmaking business as well. Because if you don't understand that, um, you're going to really get beat up just trying to apply your trade as a, you know, as a photographer or wardrobe my, my person. My daughter has been through that. My daughter is, and I know I'm bragging on my daughter, but mm -hmm. uh, but my daughter, uh, you know, she's in her 40s and she has teenage kids and so forth. And mm -hmm. She has uh, three daughters and one son, and they've all been in the business. But anyway. Again, she has had to learn the hard way. She didn't yes. have Advent. Sure. She had to learn the hard way, and, and of course, with the advent of computers and and, and you know, uh, I remember her used to complain. She'd be complaining about you know, well, I gotta go get headshots, new headshots, and it costs an arm and leg. And now she's learned. She has other 
people that are coming into business come to her and mm -hmm. say, how do you do headshots? How, you know, and sure. she shows them on their computer. And so anyway, she's going to, I'm going to, before I forget, yeah. I'm going to give you, that's my church card. Okay. That's where I pastor the church. Okay, great. And this lady sitting across here, that's her. That's Corey okay. Harkins. Hi, I'm Corey. giving him a card. <laughs> and, and. And this is, uh, she's asking you for a card. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, and then this is, of course, where the show is on. Right now we're broadcasting on Ustream.tv, yeah, and that's when the show is on. Okay. And that's all of my information. And, Corey, there's there his go. card. And I have been asked by Bob for you at some point in this to discuss Red September. Okay, we'll okay. get to that. Okay, we'll get to uh, that. Tell Bob, hang yeah. on. Uh, uh, I have another fella. Uh, we, uh, you talked about small beginnings. Uh, First of all, I don't take any money. Uh, we're everything we do is under the auspices of our church. My yeah. church pays me as a pastor, so I don't draw any salary for this, uh, nor does she or anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Yeah, we have a caller on Crusade Radio. Go ahead, caller. Well, this is Bob from Woodstock, Georgia. Michael's doing a wonderful job there. We were talking earlier. He's got a forthcoming project, a movie called. Uh, Well, as you can probably see, if you're watching, as you can probably see, Bob, if you're watching, he is right here on the set with me, and we're talking about that, and we were just getting ready to broach that subject of uh, Red September. So, if you will, uh, we'll let this... All right. Thank you for reminding us of that, and I would have asked him that in a minute, but I'm glad you you encouraged me, and that reminds me. So, thank you, Bob. Thank you for getting this uh, guest on for us, and God bless you there in Georgia. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Bye bye. Okay. All right, that's Bob Bosworth. He's an elderly gentleman in his 80s. He was a music minister at our church, mm -hmm. and then he decided to move to Georgia uh, to get closer to his family, trying to put his family back together, in all yes. honesty. And I'm not sharing secrets or anything because he's talked about it on the show. But uh, he's back there. He works as one of my producers. Okay. He contacts yes. people like you. We go through Christian Newswire and other mm -hmm. organizations. And so he tries to help schedule people to come on the show. Yes. And he does a great job. And uh, that's what Corey does as well. And uh, and so that was Bob Bosworth. And he also calls in once in a while and says, I want to sing. And he's a singer. <laughs> and great. so he sings. We do live television here. Everything right. is live. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't trim it. We don't cut it. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things my kids have shared over the years is that they would, you know, they would go do something. They'd do a scene with a commercial or whatever. And what ended up on the cutting room, you might, they'd always say, what ended up on the cutting room floor was the best part. part sure. <laughs> Let uh, me just give you a plug for one of my granddaughters. You might look this up later. But one of my granddaughters is named Kendra McCulty. Okay. And uh, she did a movie called The Crossing. And it's a, it's a short movie, but it's an excellent movie, and, the, and I'll give you the story. It basically is a story of a man who's an alcoholic who has a little girl mm -hmm. and a little boy. Mm -hmm. And the little girl is in the movie is only about 10 or 11 years old. And so she is now in a situation where she is the mother to her little brother. She is the cook for her dad. She is a house cleaner for her dad. And her dad is a belligerent, abusive drunk. And it's a terrible, terrible situation that we see all too often. Yes. Uh, but the movie does have a great, great ending in it. And uh, it's a great movie. I'm not going to give the story away. But, but if any of you would like, you can go on, you know, Google or whatever. It's called The Crossing hmm. with Kendra, K-E-N-D-R-A, McCulty. And it, it is absolutely, not just because she's my granddaughter, but uh, it went to the Sundance. Wow, that's and, great. And, and so she is, that's one of her little success nuggets. Now, let's get back. Bob said, and Bob, <laughs> oh my Kate, uh, before we, uh, we don't want to run out of time here. Sure. We've still got plenty of time. But if people are interested in what 
I'm saying they yeah. ought to be, and interested in getting involved in what you're doing. Now, you said uh, a key word a while ago, not for profit. Yes. I'm a pastor of a church, and so we're a 501c3 nonprofit, you know, and I understand all of that. Some of our audience may not understand that. Uh, I had one guy come on one time and say, well, I started a business. It wasn't non for profit, but it's been no profit. <laughs> yeah, that's, there are a lot of those. There are a lot of those. <laughs> but, but when you talk about a nonprofit, yeah. tell our listening audience how that's going to work and how you're going to work that out and how they can be involved in participating, not yes. only watching, not only benefiting, but shelling out a few bucks to help out. Sure. So uh, tell them. All right, thank you. Yes, as a, well, we had Advent Film Group, and that will continue to exist, but now we have also created Advent Filmmakers Center for Training and Discipleship. And that is, that has not-for-profit status with the IRS so that if anyone contributes money to the work of the Filmmaker Center, then those will be deductible donations for tax purposes. And uh, we, what we did, the reason we, ch we changed over uh, to create this new entity is we needed the not-for-profit status because we wanted to offer the entire body of Christ the opportunity to participate in what we're doing because we think it's so strategic Amen. Uh, in terms of shaping our culture. There's nothing more powerful than visual media oh. uh, to, to shape a culture. It's sticky. It's very, very sticky. And uh, it, so we, we're, we do look forward to people wanting to come alongside in many ways. Down the road, we, we're not prepared to do this right at the moment, but I want to give you part of the vision, is we now we'll be working with people in much, many more people through uh, web seminars, through um, we'll have community for them to connect together and build some friendships along the way. It's going to be much more interactive. We can reach a lot more people. We're creating curriculum for different ages. Amen. Uh, we are creating, we want to serve the church Amen. because one of, one of the most critical things for people to understand is how manipulative and powerful visual media is. And so we want to create a curriculum that's available for every church, every youth group, whether it's middle school or high school, Amen. so that people can really stop, take a breath, look what's going on. We want to bring to people, you know, the, the finest and most recent psychological, sociological, anthropological, brain science, everything Amen. else, to Amen. be able to let people know that every choice they make before uh, you know, to view something that's being Amen. mediated, meaning you're not seeing it directly. It's something somebody decided what you should see. Mm -hmm. Even right now, if you're watching this, the angle that, that you see and what you see, you didn't make that decision. No, right. I don't think we were real, um, we didn't spend any time <laughs> thinking about it, but, but the point is it happens. It somebody happens. shaped somebody what it is you're going to see. Um, and so that's really crucial. And I use an example often um, uh, to just ask a person, look, did you go to church last Sunday? Yes. Um, can you tell me what the one or two or three main points of the sermon was? <laughs> they'll look at you and they'll be like, scratching huh? their head. And you know, a few people will, will get it, and and maybe someone will get one point, but they'll well, that's it. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's it. Right. Then I can turn around and say, listen, think of the movies you've seen in the last six months. Mm -hmm. Think of one that you saw at least two months ago. Mm -hmm. Um, say, okay, I got one. I say, well, tell me about it. They know the story. Sure, they know sure. the scenes. Yeah, they know everything. names and okay. everything. Yeah, sure. So we, we, we know that people have to hear the word. Yeah. And, and there's, I mean, preaching is crucial. Absolutely. Uh, but we have this other instruction modality that's going around all day long, 24-7, and we have a rising generation that spends their entire life with their face in a screen. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a handheld one, yeah. whether it's their iPad, their computer, a television, yeah. a, a, a movie theater. Mm. And this this is what is shaping their minds Absolutely. in every way. And it's not to shape the mind of Christ mm -hmm. in people. That's okay? right. Absolutely I mean, not. sadly, the way the world is to use media to do one of two things. To turn you into an ATM Mm -hmm. So that they can they can do something to get money out of your pocket yeah. at any given moment, and that also leads to the temptation. Sadly, it's it's you know it's given into sure. the temptation to do edgier and edgier and edgier things because Absolutely. that gets more and more and more attention. Yeah. But after everybody's bored with the last new edgy thing, somebody else comes along <laughs> yeah. with something edgier. Yeah. yeah. And so we're and in this spiral down. It's just worse and worse, worse, and, worse yeah. and worse and worse. Exactly. Well, you're absolutely right. And by the way, uh, I have another daughter. <laughs> 
that is actually my older daughter. She she's a couple of years older than the daughter that's in Hollywood, but she is a minister uh, to children's education mm. in a church in Redland, California. A very large church. She has about 400 kids in her daycare center, and she is keenly because of her her sister uh, uh, in in using the most innovative ways. In fact. If, uh, if you go to the Southern Baptist Convention, which is our denomination, uh, my daughter Kimberly had the opportunity to write a book uh, called Early Childhood Education. Mm. And she deals with some of those things in there, what kind of films to use, what to use, what not to use, and, and those kind of effects. So she's going to be excited to see this show. So when I talk to them tonight, I'm going to say, watch my show today okay. and, and, and see who I had on. They're both going to be very interested sure. in what happened today on the show. Uh, uh, I wish I could say they always watch sure. my shows, but I wouldn't dare say that because I right. don't want to lie. <laughs> yes. But yes. They, it's because they have busy lives. Right. Uh, in fact, I, one of my daughters told me not too long ago, she said, Dad, i got to watch your show. I said, why? She said, well, somebody called me and told me you talked about such and such, and I didn't get to watch it. Sure. Yes. <laughs> but I was too busy. Yeah. But yeah. the point is, ladies and gentlemen, we must take our children back. Mm -hmm. There's two parts of this, and I want to hit it, and then we'll get back to you. Um, there's a positive and a negative side. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus made it very clear. I just issued an edict, for example, to uh, uh, the city of Phoenix, Arizona, because I said the Bible says if you offend one of these children, it'd be better you had a millstone tied about your neck and thrown in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to dare offend children. That's the negative side. Uh, and, and I said, when we saw this man in Arizona that's in jail, right now as we speak, he's in a, about a halfway through a 60-day jail term and he was put in jail not for violating the law but he was put in jail because he held a bible study in his private home and they brought charges against him i don't want to go into that case we've already talked about it but the bottom line is i said to them city council of phoenix arizona judge and jury you have offended those children and we know they were offended because when he was found guilty those kids were in the courtroom and all six of them were literally weeping for their father. Mm. Now that means city council, that means judge, that means jury, that means you offended those children. <laughs> what did Jesus say? Be better you had a millstone tied about your neck. Now that's the negative side of it. Mm -hmm. The positive side is we're seeing so many great things. Our co-chairman here in Washington on the Congressional Prayer Conference is a man by the name of Clyde Rivers. He is the ambassador at large for the nation of Burundi. He's a younger fella, and he's working with young people all over the country, in Africa and around the world, but all, he, even here. He's not an African. He is absolutely, he's an African-American, but he is born and raised in, in America. But the president, who is a Christian of Burundi, uh, ask him to be their ambassador. So he's their ambassador for Burundi, which is wow. a sort of a strange deal. But one of the emphasis and one of the things he's been talking to me about, and this is why this is such a God thing you coming on, is because he says, Wiley, I like what you're doing. I like what you're doing on the prayer hill, on the hill and all the things. But he said, we must reach our youth. And he has, he has uh, in fact, one of the men that he works with and is mentored is a man by the name of Dr. Robert Ornalis. And Dr. Robert Ornalis is, as we speak, <coughs> vice presidential candidate for the United States of America. Really? On the Independent Party. Okay. And he has an organization called Elite TV. Hmm. And he works with young people. He especially works with, uh, he's Hispanic. He especially works with the, with the hip-hop group and the music and those kind of things, mm -hmm. as well as uh, we just had some people in our church in California that came for a visit to us that worked with him, and they were from the Crow Nation and the Sioux Nation of the Indians in America. So it's a great opportunity there. The young people on the reservation and the young people in the ghetto and the barrio and in upper-class Bel Air, you know, uh, I've had some kids call me and say, you know, I hear you're trying to get some things done in the movie industry. How do we get involved? What can we be? Wow. And folks, I want him to give you the uh, websites sure. and information again. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested in what he's doing and what we're doing together, uh, tell them how to get in touch sure. with you. Uh, the website is 
adventfilmmakers.org, O-R-G. And that's two M's in filmmakers. Okay. Adventfilmmakers.org. Correct. Okay. okay. And the phone number is 540-338-8023. And that's a local number. Yes, five four zero local here in Virginia. In Virginia, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we're located. And uh, of course, folks, you know my number, you know my telephone number. And uh, if you're interested in this, con contact them first. Mm -hmm. But if there's anything we can do, if you'd like to come on and talk about what you've talked to them about or what you're doing, uh, folks, I am firmly convinced. Not just because I've met this gentleman. Uh, but I'm firmly convinced we must get our youth back. And uh, I'm an old man, and I'm going to be one of these days getting yes. out of here. Yeah. But at the same time, we need to leave a legacy with our young people. Exactly. And this, you, you know, you hit the nail on the head a while ago. It is so absolutely dynamic in what the film entertainment industry can do. Mm -hmm. And they can do it to the negative right. or to the positive. Yes. And it's not a matter, you know, we've got to regain it. We've got to regain our youth. Or, or they can even do it just as a missed opportunity, which is really a shame. Yeah. So in Hollywood, they can make some really great movies, but they missed an opportunity. Yeah. So I'll give you Titanic as my favorite example. I mean, it's a pretty amazing mm -hmm. movie, one of the one of the you know most watched movies Classic. of all time, right? Except that it didn't end the story. It cut the story short. That's right. Exactly. Because... At that very end, when people were floating around, wondering what their fate was going to be, in real life, there was a famous evangelist from Scotland. His name was Doctor, uh, or excuse me, uh, John Harper. Yes. Who D. L. Moody asked to come over to do some joint um, uh, evangelism with him. So he was on his way over, and when. That was ending and going bad. He got in the water and swam around to everybody he could and asked them, are you right with God? Are you saved? Amen. Um, can you imagine in that exact same film with just one or two more minutes added? Just a few, with, just a few more that, scenes. Yeah. Just, just him doing that. Every person already who was already stirred up emotionally oh my would have had to watch out of that theater and say, with that hey, question yeah, being asked of themselves. Oh, what a great opportunity that so, would have been. So, you know, there it is. Uh, yeah. it, it's, it's because Hollywood just, it, it doesn't have Absolutely. the spirit. Yeah. I mean, let's just, Absolutely. or the word. Yeah, that's right. And let me just give you another example of that, twofold. Number one, the rotunda here in the uh, Capitol. Ah, yes. I know. That's one media, yeah. the rotunda in the Capitol, and another company, a big company in California, Disney Company. Yes. Number one, they came out with a movie about Pocahontas. Mm -hmm. And it was a great movie. Yeah. Great Disney production, great, you know, I mean, by anybody's imagination, great, great movie, great opportunity. But what I tell people in the rotunda, when you go in the rotunda, you see those great murals and pictures mm -hmm. and you see this great presentation and you see Pocahontas mm -hmm. now the movie left us with Pocahontas the pagan Pocahontas who had no hope really yeah. didn't say she didn't but it basically had a good ending but what a better thing to be would to say okay here's a whole movie Pocahontas but at the end she came to know Jesus as Lord and Savior right. and that great mural in the rotunda is a mural of her being baptized yep. now and I tell the when I go over there, I get in trouble sometimes because the tour guides are saying, and here's this and here's that and they're yeah. pointing out everything. And I say, hey, look, see that picture right there? You're pointing all around it. Point to that lady in the white dress. Good for you. Point to that lady in the white dress and tell them she didn't leave this world a pagan. She right. left this world and went to heaven because she was saved and baptized. Yes. And that's American history. Yes, it is. And that's what yeah. needs to be done in the movies and in the pictures and other sure. things. Can I talk about Red sure, September right. now? Please. Yes. We, yeah, Bob's going to be mad if we don't. Right. Well, we, we just took uh, everyone on a walk across the street to the Capitol yeah. with, uh, All for, right. for that, right? So yeah. we, we might as well stick with the Capitol yes, building. Yes, yes. Uh, Red September is a, a film uh, about the bailout of 2008. 
there are three years of research involved in this with consulting high end economists and others also doing interviews of many members of Congress, both Republican and Democratic, but we were interviewing people who fought the bailout. And what's really interesting, um, you know, if you think about it, the whole that time of the bailout was one of the most nonpartisan mm. times in, in yes, our nation's yes, history, yes. because what you had is the power elite from both parties, uh, basically ignoring the deletes from both parties. Yeah. And uh, uh, but there were real heroes, people willing to stand on on principle, people not willing to be bulldozed with with yep. a bunch of fear mongering. Uh, and uh, and putting everybody into a tizzy, and uh, it's a film that gives the inside view. We want something that's going to perpetuate, well, create the true narrative and perpetuate it for Amen. decades and decades Amen. to come. Because others have made movies or documentaries. There are about eight things out there now over the last few years, yeah. Yeah. but they all come from a Hollywood um, worldview or perspective yeah. and uh, and a certain political perspective. Um, that, that just leaves important things out. And so we feel this is really crucial to be able to put a stake in the ground as soon as we can get it made Amen. so that whoever is elected president or uh, this time around will have uh, a, something there to say, don't ever do this again, and Absolutely. why? And it'll be the rallying cry of the people to go back Amen. and remember. We have to remember what happened. And so the, when you're raising money for a film, it's the first part of that money, that that full development money, um, that that you, is really hard to get. Yeah. Um, and so, we are looking forward to see how God's going to move in people uh, to to come alongside this particular project and just to make donations to uh, Advent. Filmmakers.org, mm -hmm. uh, and so brother, here, here, like I said, I'm a preacher, and I yes. preach, and I preach people and teach people to get involved, and and I like to be a practicer of what I preach. Sure. Now I pastor a small church, and I don't have much money, but I want to make a donation. I'm gonna make. I want you folks to know, I'm gonna make a personal donation, and I'm not just saying it because he's <laughs> sitting here, uh, but uh, I am gonna make a personal donation. And it, I just need to go on the website, and I can do yes. it there. Yeah, there's a you can. It says that you can donate. Just click that; it'll take you to a page, and then okay. you can you can make donate. A, make a donation. Yes. I want to be able to say, ladies and gentlemen, I, I like to get involved in things. I was the guy, for example. I started the Chick Fil A day. Mm. On Did you August really? The first. I'm the guy that Fantastic. started that. I'm the guy uh, that started. That. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad to say I started that. Now yes. I know Mike Huckabee and. And uh, Rick Santorum and everybody else in the world got on board. But I'm the first guy. I'm the guy that said, we're going to do Chick-fil-A Day at our homeless shelter yeah. we have at our church. And at our church. And I encourage everybody to do Chick-fil-A Day on August the 1st. So I'm the guy that started that. And I like to be involved in that. And, and you know, I told somebody yesterday that about six bucks will get me Starbucks. But <laughs> the point is, I like to be able to say, hey, I did something. something. I was there. That's right. Now, I don't have the money to promote a movie. I don't have a lot of money. But I want to be able to, when I look back at, at Red September, and when I look back at what God's going to do for you folks, mm -hmm. I want to be able to say, thank you, Lord, for letting me be a part mm -hmm. of it. Uh, a little part might mm. be a little part, but let me uh, thank you, Lord, for letting me be a little part of it. And I'm part of what you guys are doing. Mm. And I, I thank you so much well, for being you. here with us today. I want to say that my my partner George Escobar mm. and I feel the same way. Every day we get up, we we sort of just say, Lord, thank you for the privilege of Amen. laboring Amen. in this field of endeavor. Amen. Well, we're running out of time, unfortunately, and we have another meeting. We have to go to the Family Research Council. Ah. Uh, when we leave here, we're going over FRC, and so we have to get over there. For sure. That. Take my cards. Give me one of yours also. Uh, okay, I'll give you another. Uh, give give yeah. me another one because sure. I, there you go. I'll lose mine, but yeah. she'll keep hers. But um, anyway, we're going to have to wrap up here, and right. uh, you and Corey can talk for a minute if you'd like. Uh, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I want you to go to that website, check it out, and and let's work together on this. This is a project that I can get behind. I am behind it, brother. I want you to know that. Thank you. And I want you to know that our program is available. That's my producer. She'll book you anytime you want to be booked, and uh, we want to be a part of this. And I'm I'm excited tonight when I call my daughters, Carla and Kim, who who are 
behind my ministry and so forth. Yeah. I want, I'm excited about calling them and telling them, hey, look at Dad's show today and see what we're talking about. Sure. And both of them, I assure you, are going to be very supportive of what you're doing. And fact of the matter is, my uh, granddaughter, Kendra, uh, who did The Crossing and that movie I was talking about, she just got back from uh, several weeks in New York at New York University Actors School, mm. their special school for actors oh, and yes. actresses. Yeah. She just got back from that, and she's excited about hitting the ground running. Uh, it was a training kind of thing sure. uh, from a secular point of view, uh, yeah, but, uh, but the same kind of thing you got. And so I guarantee you she's going to be interested in, in what you got. I'd, I'd love to have a chance to and interact I'd, with, I'd, with I'd her. Love to, and I'd love to get Sounds to, like you, you can send us a whole family for, send a whole for, family. Uh, to, yeah. to one of our workshops or something <laughs> for a weekend. Absolutely. Uh, Folks, thank you so much. God bless you for being with us today. Don't forget, we'll be back tonight at 8 o'clock. DC time. Now, for those of you folks in California, you know that's Wiley Live at 5 in Hollywood <laughs> and near California. We're from Buena Park. God bless you. If you want to call me and get more information, my personal cell phone number is 714-865-8132. Good day. God bless you. Crusade Radio, thank you for carrying us today. And we're out of here. That's a wrap, as they say in Hollywood. Yes, indeed. Bye-bye. So long. Thank you. Well, I really appreciate